from Lesson 3. Today is September 15th, 2024. Our devotional reading is coming from Romans 8, 29 through 39. Our background scripture is coming from 2 Kings 19. Our printed passage is coming from 2 Kings 19, 14 through 20, 29 through 31. And our lesson topic to, for today is, Is It Inevitable? Lesson A. As a result of experiencing this lesson, the participants should be able to do the following. Distinguish Hezekiah's response to God from those of other Old Testament kings. Value prayer in the face of a crisis. Journal, email, or text as form of worship, reverent, honest prayer at a time of crisis. The lesson of focus. The story of King Hezekiah, as told in 2 King 19, teaches us how to deal with difficult situations. When we are faced with impending <coughs> doom or disaster, it is important to acknowledge the gravity of our situation and turn to God in prayer. We should trust in his promise and seek his guidance, knowing, knowing that he will always be there to help us through difficult times. In life, we may encounter trials and disasters, but we must hold on to hope and trust in God's sovereignty. No challenge is too big for him to handle, and he will always work things out for our good. As we face difficult situations, let us remember the example of King Hezekiah and turn to God in prayer. By doing so, we can find inspiration, strength, and courage to face any challenge that comes our way. The biblical text. The book of 2 Kings is a part of the Old Testament, providing a detailed account of the divided kingdoms of Israel and the events described in 2 Kings 18 through 19 occurred around 853 BC. This book section focuses mainly on King Hezekiah, who ruled over Judah during a critical period. Hezekiah was known for being one of the godliest rulers of Judah. He made sure to do everything right in the eyes of the Lord, following in the footsteps of his father, King David. Hezekiah made sure to destroy pagan worship centers, remove idols, and even break the bronze snake that Moses had fashioned during the Exodus, as it had become an object of worship. In 701 BC, the Assyrian king Sennacherib invaded Judah and managed to overrun all of the fortified cities, except for Jerusalem. Hezekiah panicked and tried to pay off Sennacherib, um, but this ransom failed to deter the Assyrian king. Sennacherib's officers told Hezekiah that it was foolish of him to align with Egypt against Assyria, as Egypt was weak. They also claimed that God was upset with Hezekiah for removing the high places in Judah against his wishes. Faced with this situation, Hezekiah turned to prayer and sought the counsel of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied that God would defend Jerusalem and that Sennacherib would not prevail. That very night, the angel of the Lord struck down 185,000 Assyrian soldiers, leading to their retreat. This event marked a turning point in Judah's history as Jerusalem was saved from Assyria's invasion. Thank you. The summary read our devotional reading comes from Romans 8, 29 through 39. For whom did he foreknow? He also did predestination to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he predestinate? Them he also called, and to whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Where shall we then say to these things? If God be for you, who can be against you? He that spreads not his own, spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also made intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall constitute, 
Tribulation. 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 Uh, distress, a persecute, a feminine, a nakedness, a peer, a sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killing all the days long. We are accounted as sheep for the ship slap slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor the life, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Whoever wants to stand and read our key verse together. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of this hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only, second King 1919. Now we'll turn this over to our Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Naisha, for uh, being on the post this morning, introducing of our lesson. We thank you for everyone this morning to press your way out. And we just glad to see everyone to our pastor. Great lesson for us this morning. It is in evidence. In evidence, meaning that it is certain that it will happen. Unavoidable. Our first outline this morning is um, working here. seeking God in time of crisis. We're going to ask someone if you would read those uh, verses for 17, 19, 14 through 19, and then in your book read this past, uh, right there, verse 19. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it, and Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwellest between the cerebrum, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kings of earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thy ear, and hear, O the Lord, thine eyes to see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, Sennacher, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, of the truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations in their land, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kings of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. King Hezekiah received a threatening letter from King to instead of a verbal message from the field commander or anonymous messenger, Sennacherib considered his home is evident in verse 14, but Hezekiah responded as before by going up to the temple out of, out of the Lord, praying personally and trusting in Isaiah's earlier words. Hezekiah spread the letter out before the Lord in a symbolic act, emphasizing that this was a matter for God alone to handle. Hezekiah's prayer in verse 15 to 19 had a simple structure that can also be found in other parts of the Bible, especially in songs of complaint or lament. The prayer begins with an invocation in verse 15, followed by a description of the situation of or a lament in verses 16 to 18, and ended with a supplication in verse 19. Okay, thank you, Naya. Seeking God in time of crisis. That is something that I imagine all of us at one time have had to do. We've been faced with something and had to call on God because you didn't see no way out of it. I remember a time when I had to look at that pistol check and I knew the bills already had my way. <clears throat> you look at it and you had more bills than you had money. Pulled to the bank Monday to pray that God stretch it. And he did. So in, in 
my situation then, I was up against something that I knew I couldn't handle. When they, uh, they used to say you robbed Peter to pay Paul. Now Peter ain't got it. Paul needed it. Ain't nobody got it. So you got to trust in God. Amen. 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 Seeking God in times of crisis. Now in 2 Kings 19, 14, throughout our lesson, the uh, 31st verse, what had happened here that uh, the Syrian king, Sennacherib, he had went by and just attacked other nations, invaded other nations. Uh, Judah now is ruled by King Hezekiah. The crisis was that the country was being invaded by the Syrian king. Now, another thing we want to take that into account here is that Hezekiah, in 2 Kings 18 and 2, he was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. I'm not sure what his age was, but at this time that Assyria was invading the country and had let them know, Judah know that they were on their way. Our problem have no age limit. We can be young, middle aged, old. The crisis is the problem going to come. It had no respect of age. So now, what has happened that uh, Sennacherib have uh, boasts about his invasion of other countries and destroying their gods and everything. So now the news get to Hezekiah that he's on his way to invade Judah. And in this passage, Hezekiah demonstrates his faith by faith in God by praying for Jerusalem delivered from the Assyrians. He acknowledged the greatness of God who created heaven and earth and reigned over all kingdom of the earth. He also, he asked that the other nation recognize the difference between one true God and false God. Hezekiah's unwavering faith and trust in God inspired us to trust him and seek help in time of difficult difficulties. To seek God and trust him in times of difficult. And I would advise anyone that let's not just wait till a problem comes. Okay? We, if we already got that relationship with God, God's already got us. When we have that relationship with God, God already got us. And, and y'all probably get tired of me hearing it, but I said, we ought to have that Daniel mentality. Just have a devotion life with God. And when Daniel Christ came, God was already there. Okay? So, so what we should do is just already have that relationship with him. And let me tell you something. It ain't a lot of time what you see other people do or hear their prayer. Your prayer going to be different. Amen. Your prayer going to be personal between you and God. Amen. So some people may pray a long time. Some people might have a short prayer. But the most, the key to our prayer is that our prayer be sincere. Amen. Okay? And the good thing about this is that Judah had a, a, a God-fearing leader. In verse 14, it said, And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and read it, and Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Now, this letter was what Sennacherib, the Syrian king, had said, what are you going to do? Okay? And, and, and he it talked about what he's going to do and, and the, how the other nation failed at, at his invasion and all. But one of the key things is that it said, and Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and he read it. Next thing is that he went up into the house of the Lord 
and spread it before the Lord. Amen. He laid his problem on the altar of God. A lot of times we, we, we try to handle it our own self. And, and I can imagine when he read this threatening letter, he knew, <coughs> Lord, this is your way. I'd heard people say it before, and a lot of times they said, well, you know, they sitting there at the table and trying to figure out the bill spread all over the table, and they just laid down on and gave them to the Lord. Right. It ain't no shame, man. Right. Yeah, ain't no shame, man. But then when I, when I read what Hezekiah had done, I thought about hearing that testimony before where people said their they, they problem was bigger than their, their own solution. Mm -hmm. And they had to give it to God. Here, Hezekiah had a problem being a young person. that no doubt that he read it and he knew that he made the most important thing. Mm -hmm. He went to the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Now, what that means is he gave it to God. Yes. Okay, he gave it to God. And then in verse 15, it says, and Hezekiah did what? Prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth in between the cherubims, thou art the God. Even thou alone of all kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Now, in verse 15, Hezekiah acknowledged who God is. Mm -hmm. It tells us that we come there, we must first believe that what God exists. Okay? So he acknowledged who God is and talked about that he's God alone. In other words, I like what you read a few minutes ago. He said he took all those wooden gods and those stone gods and threw them in the fire because they wasn't no God at all. Made a bonfire with him because there wasn't no God at all. And here Hezekiah is acknowledged. He said, Thou alone of all the kingdom of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Acknowledge who God is. That's our first step. Okay? Acknowledge who God is. 16 said, And Lord, bow down thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, thy eyes and see and hear the word of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Mm -hmm. Now, he was saying, listen to what he said in that letter. If we had time, we would go back and, and, and read what he said in that letter. Uh, he goes back and he, he boasts about what he's going to do and, and what he had done to the other kings and and the nation, and, and, and talk about, well, where were they God? If they God didn't deliver them, you think your God going to deliver you? That was boasting from a, a, a pagan king, okay? He said, and hear the word of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Now, in Isaiah 44 and 6, Isaiah wrote this, and thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no other God. Okay? Now, here, Isaiah was prophesying to Hezekiah, telling him about this. So now, remember this, that when he received the letter, the problem that he was facing. He done two things that we should always do. Present it to God, acknowledge who God is, and pray. Amen. Now, let me tell you. Give it to God, acknowledge who God is, and pray. When we faithful in our prayer and believe that God is the reward of those that diligently seek him, we ain't got to worry about trying to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. God's going to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Only thing we got to do is be patient. And I say it all the time. God doesn't have to tell us what he's going to do right. or when he's going to do it. No. We just got to trust that God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing in my life I've been praying about a long time. Mm -hmm. But I still believe that God's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes I like, oh, that's been a long time. 
But we got to understand what we see is a long time ain't nothing with God. Amen. Right? Remember that? Amen. We said day is as a thousand years. Right. A thousand years is as a day. So, so for God, when we look like a long time, I said, nah. Mm -hmm. Nah. And then he said, it's a nut crib. What was it? In 2 Kings 18, 33 through 35, this is what he talked about. I just put it together in short form. He said, the king of Syria sent or spoke about the other countries. He had conquered and asked, did any of their gods save them? That's what he said. Did any of your gods save them? So now, you, he, he, he laid down his track record, Pastor. He laid down his track record against other countries that believed in pagan God. They were praying to wooden gods and stone gods that could not do nothing. They may have had eyes but could not hear, could not see. They may have ears that could not hear. And they sat there and legs that could not move. They had a, 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 a prayer to God that couldn't do nothing. We believe in God that I am. That I am. He's the beginning and the end. He hears our cry. He, he, he sees what we're going through. He understands all that we're facing. And get this. He's the only one to do something about it. He's the only one. Okay? Now, in verse 17, he said, Of a truth, Lord, the king of Assyria had destroyed the nation and their land. He's we got Lord, we know. I know that he'd have done this. The things he said he'd done in his letter. And but then he acknowledged, Hezekiah kind of acknowledged why he understands he destroyed. And have cast their gods into the fire. For they will know G-O-D-S. Little G-O-D-S. He said, but they will the work of man's hand. Wood and stone. And therefore, they have destroyed them. They have created, crafted, sculptured, pagan god, idol worship, out of stone and and wood and all of this, and, and they worship those gods, these other countries. And because of their worship of God that couldn't do nothing, when they probably were faced with what Hezekiah was faced with, I can imagine some of them went there and looked at those statues. Yeah. <laughs> Deliver us. Hmm. And they didn't do nothing but just <laughs> couldn't move. Hmm. Because they will know God. Can you imagine how they felt when, when Sennacherib came down and took they 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 carved statue and threw them in the fire and burned them up and they stoned and took them down and all of this and and, and think about they done nothing but we worship Hezekiah worship a living God. A one and only God, a God that beside him there is no other. And you know what I love about God? Is that God moves in ways that we won't understand. He moves in ways that we'll never understand. But let me tell you this, what I found out is that when we look at what we're facing, and, and after a while we look at how we got through it, whoa. We know nobody done it but God. Amen. Couldn't nobody do it but God. And he didn't have to tell us a thing. Let me tell you something I learned. I remember a long time ago, and, and I'm going to use this for an example to show you how God can move in my life. I did. I remember several years ago, over 20 some years ago, I was faced with losing my job. Worried. All my children were small, they were in school. And I was worried about losing my job and I was one of them fellas that would just go do whatever they need done. Amen. So, it talked about Mary. 
But then when they talk about cutting, they wouldn't talk about seniority. I was a guy with less seniority. I did a hell of a cow after I prayed to God. People I work with were laughing because I was going to lose my job. And I just prayed. Sitting at the table one night, worried about children having insurance, school clothes, paying the light bill, buying groceries. What am I going to do now? I sit there at that table, and it seemed like God just, spirit just came and lift that burden off of me. Yes, he will. I felt the burden is gone. Yes, he will. And that's the way God worked. <clears throat> we can be burdened down with something. You don't see it on your back, but it will lay heavy on your back. It lay heavy on your mind. But God will move in a way to tell you, you don't have to worry about this. I got it. I got it. Now, he said in verse 18, he said, uh, but the works of men's hand and wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. He said, now therefore, in verse 19, O Lord God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdom of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thy own. He said, so all the other nations will know that you are the only God. Mm. They didn't know other. I can imagine when, when, when they probably heard about how Jehovah saved Judah out of the Assyrian hand. I can imagine some other want to know they're God. Because I can, you know what people say, oh, they done tore up that town. He, he headed over to the next. Wonder what they're going to do when they tear them up. <laughs> Psalms 31 and 2. He writes, bow down thy ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. The psalm is right there, and he cry, and that really is a short prayer. Mm -hmm. When I told you earlier, sometimes it don't have to be long. Just let God know what you want him to do. Amen. Have faith that he'll do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. He says, save him. Okay? Now, let's go to our second outline. It is God hears and responds to, responds to our cry. 2 Kings 19, 20, 29 through 31. And Isaiah the son of Amos said to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year, which spring from which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. <coughs> and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth the remnant, and they that escape out of the mount out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Okay. Hezekiah faced a difficult time and sought guidance from the prophet Isaiah. God had heard his prayer, and God's response would impact the entire kingdom of Judah. The promise of restoration was for the remnant, and prayer united them, united them as a community. The promise of the remnant taking root and bearing fruit symbolizes hope and restoration. God's zeal ensures fulfillment. We can find hope through prayer in our crises, because God specializes in transforming brokenness into beauty, despair into hope, and ashes into new beginnings. We must pray for restoration, healing, reconciliation, and renewal, and trust that God's zeal is at work, even when circumstances are bleak, seem bleak. Moreover, we should remember the three-year timeline, eating what grows by itself, then what springs forth, and finally sowing and reaping. Answers to prayer are not always instant. They require faith persistence. Hezekiah had to wait for God's promise to be fulfilled 
And in our crisis, we must continue to pray even when answers seem delayed. Amen. Thank you, Lon. She read that, and I know you heard it, but I will say it again. Answers to prayer are not always instant. They require persistence. Okay? Answers to prayer are not always instant. They require persistence. Okay? Now, she said, also, we must continue praying even when the answers seem delayed. Now, not that we continue praying because God is here. The key word was persistent. Persistent. You ever had to go for a job and, and they tell you, you say, well, I don't know, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> Some people miss because they didn't go back tomorrow, the next day. It's about persistence. <clears throat> it's about persistence. We get what we want with God. God hears us. But we show him persistence, believing that God is going to do it. He said we are, he's a reward of those that do what? Diligently seek him. Okay? Now, when she read that the answer to prayer are not always instant, she talked about brokenness. And you know, this time of year is a good time for learning how God works. When we approach the fall of the year, we see flowers shed the bloom, trees shed the leaves, so much transition. But in a few months, we'll see it all come back. Ain't that right? In other words, just like God creation go through seasons, we too go through seasons. There's some time when it seems like everything's gonna be good. And there will be some time that we're in the fall of our years and we're in the winter of our years. But if we stay persistent, mm -hmm. at a while we'll take on a new bloom. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, God hears and responds to our cry. And Isaiah prophecy is respond to Hezekiah's prayer. Someone, if you would, Lon, Tony, someone speak, read it. 2 Kings 19, 21 through 28. This is the word that the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at me, whom thou hast reproached, whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? Against whom hast thou exalted thy voice, and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? By thy messengers thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodging of his borders, and into the forest of his carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers and besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldst be laid waste, that, that thou should be to lay waste fences, fenced cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore the inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the green on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy taunt is come up into my, my ears, therefore I will put my hook in thy nose, and my bridle in thy lips. And I will turn thee back by the way, by the way that by which thou camest. Amen. Thank you, Lon. Here, God gives a prophecy to Isaiah. 
Two things. Hezekiah prayed, and God sent the message, the answer to his prophet. When I read that, I, I like verse 28, and I'm, I'm going to read it again. He said, because thy rage against me and turmoil is come up into my ear, therefore I will put my hook in his nose mm -hmm. and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which they came. Now, here Hezekiah was worried about something. God had already fixed it. He sent the prophet Isaiah to tell him what's going to happen. Now, well, was he just going to stop? No, no. Judah's still going to have to endure something. they still going to have to endure something. Because what they were going to endure, he said to hear. And, and the second part of the prophecy predict that recovery will be slow for Judah. But the remnants remain in Jerusalem will survive and prosper. The remnant will be provided for in the short term, though the crops they raise from the ground. In other words, when Sennacherib was going to come in, he was going to destroy something. We all go through something in our lives. But God can say that do not touch them or allow them to go through it. When we go through it, God hadn't left us. The Bible tells us that our trials come to do what? Make us strong. So if we never went through anything, one, we won't have no testimony. And then we can't, we'll have no knowledge of what God will do. Don't you know that when we face something, we learn what God can do? When I was facing that problem, how I'm going to take care of my family, with no job. But I seen God move. So that let me know that God can be invisible or God can manifest his power. Amen. That's what God can do. Now he tells them they're going to go through. He said, then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, is saying. I have heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib. He sprayed it out before God. Remember when he got the letter? He said he went out there and sprayed it out before God and he, and, and he prayed. It was about Sennacherib. God said, I heard the prayer about him. Have you ever <clears throat> prayed to God specifically about your problem? Amen. Don't be just gentle. Sometimes we gentle God's well with, you know, we, we got this general prayer, but we had to be specific. If your problem is a, is, a, is a big bad enemy, you tell God it's a big bad enemy. If your problem is, is a, a lack or, or, or taking care of your family or whatever it is, you tell God that's what it is. Oh, Lord, just bless me. Just bless me, Lord. We all need a lot of blessing. But some area we need God to fix it now. Hezekiah was specific <laughs> with his problem. Yeah. His problem was Sennacherib. And he told him that he'd have heard you. You answer your prayer concerning Sennacherib, the king of Israel, of Syria. So this is, this will be the sign for you. This is when you know that God is going to answer the prayer. This year you will eat what grows by itself. And the second year what spring up from that. But in the third year, sow and reap. Plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. He tells them, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna survive a couple of years. But in that third year, you sow and you're going to reap. And then he said, and the NIV said, once more a remnant of kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. In other words, they were going to be able to, to, to understand what they went through. Have you ever used your testimony, right. what you went through, to help someone else? Huh? That's what we have to do. Yeah. When, when, I, when our testimony is, is good to us and then we share with somebody else, it takes root for them. Amen. 
And sometimes, they, you know, I like to hear people testimony because people do tell me some things sometimes about their testimony and what they, what they went through. And, and I find myself, tell me that again. Because <laughs> I see God working. Mm. See God working in their lives. And you know what? God is working all our lives. Amen. In verse 31, we get the pastor get ready to come. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. A remnant is some that's left. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. They're going to go through something, but God's going to allow some remnants mm. to be there. You know what, when, when a long time ago, and, and I know these young people don't understand, <laughs> now they just don't know what a potato day it is. <laughs> She's about the youngest in here. But when they used to have a potato bank, they would take some of the potatoes from the last crop. They would put them in the, down in there, this, this little house on straw. And that's what they start planting the next year with. All the wheat didn't eat up. <laughs> but that was the remnant of last year. All right. So that's where it started. Okay? So the remnant from Israel are going to be able to start another generation from what God has done for them and what they've done, and they're going to keep them to going, okay? Now, I'm going to read this. I'm going to sit down out your way. <clears throat> it says, life is full of trials and challenges that can seem insurmountable at times. But just like King Hezekiah in the face of impending doom, we too can turn to worship, mm -hmm. prayer, and trust in God. Let us hold on to hope, have faith in his sovereignty, and never give up. Never give up. I don't care how bad our trouble look, it is never too big for God. When we serve a God that says, I am, it can be, I am the answer to what you're facing. I'm the answer to whatever you're going through, whatever you think you might be going to, God is. He's a God that will never fail. The problem is we get slack. Not God. Amen. We're going to turn it over to our back. Amen. Let your church go and say amen. 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 Thank you, brother, teacher, for expounding on truth. And God's word. It's, it's great to uh, to hear the testimonies of the saints. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what builds up our belief by others that sitting right in your midst. Amen. To hear what God has done for us. Amen. I, I, I'm so uh, elated that. This generation that we are living in, uh, to stand firm and allow God to we are be a witness to others what God had done for us. Mm -hmm. In order to say that, there has to be a change on the inside of us. Amen. That God the one does the work. Oh, yeah. Not you and I. Mm -hmm. We experience it. And this ain't the only uh, issue that God did with Hezekiah. Uh, you'll see that in the previous days to come. But so solid about it, if we can really come together as one, that I will worship. May God get the glory out of. Mm -hmm. And that's a blessing. If God get the blessing, then we can see that our living is not in vain. Amen. And so I thank God for the school again and again. You can see that we got work to do. We got, uh, uh, we want to get out of the frame of just coming, just to be coming. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm praying. I, I know we got about two more wins that I'm looking. And I didn't want to put no levy on nobody. I didn't want to see God work. Because we need that. Everything we do, every situation, we got to put God in the first. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and watch him work. Praise God.
Thank you. 